so initially we'll revise the part which we covered in the last class okay so we started with the introduction to data science so this is the syllabus which we have for the data science <coughs> so we covered the definition of data science so basically the important part when we are talking about the data science is it is an interdisciplinary field okay so the important word available for this is a interdisciplinary okay and we covered the definition of data science so these are the all the stuff we covered then we started with the big data so with respect to data science what is the meaning of big data this part we already covered so when we are considering the definition of big data in this three we are very important for us first one is volume second one is velocity third one is the variety and the complexity available for our data so this part we covered in the last class then we started with the to deal with the, our uh, big data we required some advanced tools so first we are using the some distributed computing systems where we are using hadoop and apache spark these are the two popular technology we are using to deal with the big data next to store the data and to manage the data we have the no sql database as well as we have the amazon s3 bucket and we are also using a google big query this google big query is as good as our sql what can say we have workbench like that and lastly to process that big data we require some again specified tool like apache kafka tensorflow and the dask this is the new library which is added to deal with the big data processing and analysis and for visualization purpose we have the tableau and power bi from microsoft as well as new library is included which is nothing but our plotly library okay then we started with the different types of data which we are using so we are talking about the qualitative data and another one is nothing but the quantitative data so in qualitative data basically all the categorical variables comes here and in categorical we have these two important category one is a nominal data and another one is ordinal data in nominal case the what you can say order is not important like uh, in case of what you can say in case of students available in college the male students and female students so at that time we can't say male is important or female is not important and female is important or male is not important so at that time order we can't going to predict so at that time we are using nominal data and the way where we required the order then at that time we are using ordinal data the example i have given in the last class is nothing but the what are the mass marks we have so some student they have the distinction some have first class some have second class some are pass some are having a backlogs and some are failed students so there we are having ordinal data and in quantitative data we have the interval data the example which is uh, related with the temperature and the ratio data the example we have given it has income or the what you can say rupees okay so this part we covered then these are the different features we are using related with nominal ordinal interval and ratio data so this different st uh, descriptive statistics we are going to perform on this all the different different data so we'll see this part in next unit we have all the uh, remaining stuff there now we'll start the important part related with the data science process so when we are considering a data science process one more important part uh, i have taken the reference of this uh, site 360digit.com where they have provided the mind map and through mind map they have described the uh, different different processes available for our data science project one important step is that uh, these processes are very very complex we will try to understand by our, our own way i as well as what we are saying to complete one data science project minimum in industry we required 6 to 8 months so whatever the stuff they provided here on entire stuff we are working for 6 to 8 months okay so we can see this entire part so and as well as the data science branch we are having a different different what you can say sub branches like we have machine learning then we have deep learning we also have the artificial intelligence branch we also have the nlp branch so some processes some steps are different for deep learning some steps are different for uh, text processing some steps are different when we are dealing with the ai data right so here we are going to talk about this crisp ml cube so this script stands for cross industry standard process for machine learning with quality assurance so here the cross this is the important word which we already discuss in case of our definition of data science which implies the multidisciplinary part and here we are having the, it is industry standard process for machine learning and here we are having a quality assurance so this is the what we can say steps we have related with the project management methodology available for the data science so this includes total six steps first step is nothing but data understanding and, and sorry business understanding and data understanding second part our data preparation part 
third one is a model building part fourth one is the evaluation part fifth one is model deployment part and lastly we have the monitoring and maintenance today we'll try to cover this first three parts where we are talking about business understanding then we are talking about data understanding second is the data preparation and the model building so generally to deal with the business understanding we required in our team so we have the team of data scientists or what you can say we have a group of six to eight peoples out of that some peoples are required which are acting as a domain experts so this business under in business understanding these people play a very important role so we have some domain expert or we may have some business analyst we can say in that way those whose responsibility is to understand the business and just convert that uh, business understanding problem into the data science problem so we'll see what is that business understanding after understanding a business the next job is we have to go for understanding a data so which type of job we have and for that which type of data we are going to use or which type of data we require that is understood in case of data understanding part and after that as a data scientist the work starts here that we have to prepare a data we have to build the model based on that data we have to perform an evaluation of that data we have to do at the after completion of all the stuff we have to do the deployment of that mo uh, model and at the end we should continuously monitor the data so that if there are certain changes in the data or if your model it performs in some different way then we should monitor it and we should correct it so in this way we have these six different steps so we'll start one by one step okay and so again i am saying i am using this uh, mind map this is a link i have i will share the ppt with you later on you go through this part uh, currently it will be a little bit difficult to me to uh, express this mind map so i simply take took the screenshot and then I am explaining that part. So one by one process we will see the first part we have nothing but business understanding. So what is the meaning of business understanding? So in industry first when we will deal with the different types of data or we will deal with the different types of project we should convert that problem into the proper business statement. So what we required in business understanding first thing is required that we should have the recording of the business objective. We should define our business objective. Second one, we should define our business constraint. Now, what is the meaning of business objective? Suppose currently, right now I am working with one of the financial project. So as we, if you talk about a bank, the bank must understand that uh, if corresponding person, if it comes to the bank and bank want to approve his loan or not. So my problem statement is that I want to approve the loan. I want to approve the loan. If it is yes or no, this is what the problem statement we have based on this we can record our business objective so in this case what is our objective so why we have to approve the loan and what uh, if you reject the loan what will happen right so basically to approve the loan we are considering the entire previous status of the corresponding customer based on that we can decide whether the customer is liable to pay the loan with the interest or not and based on that we are deciding whether we have to approve the loan or we have to reject the loan Right. So this will help. Basically, it will help for to maximize the bank profit. So our business objective is nothing but we have to maximize the bank profit. But while maximizing the bank profit, we also have to provide some constraint. So these constraints are basically like what is the meaning of constraint so whenever we are achieving the bam bam or when we are maximizing the bank bank profit at that time we also have certain restrictions like if you are someone is coming to you and if you want to take a loan from the bank then whatever the process we have this process must be very short and sweet so this is the constraint we have right we can't go for like this someone coming to today to me and i'm approving or rejecting his loan after three or four months it should not be like that it should be very fast process so this is the constraint we have so in this given constraint, I will try to maximize my bank profit. So in this way, we have to provide the business objective and we have to provide business constraint with discussion with our domain expert, which is available with us, or we can say it as a business analyst. Next, now whatever the objective or whatever the projects we have for that, we have to go for the success criteria. When I will consider that my project is a successful project. So to define the success criteria, we have these three cases. One is a business success criteria. Another one is nothing but ML success criteria and third one is the economic success criteria. Business success criteria, what it tells currently, suppose uh, the bank, if 10% customers are becoming the defaulters. So while applying our project, we'll say that from this 10% discount, it will come to the 7%. So I have reduced the, what you can say, the NPA part 
or nothing but the loan defaulter part from 10% to 7%. In this way, we should specify some business success criteria. And this criteria must be understood by ourselves also as well as this criteria must, must be understood by the uh, business perspective that means domain expert. Second one is nothing but ML success criteria. Now this is completely depend on the machine learning algorithm which we are using. If I will say my whatever the project we have, my project is giving a 95% accuracy or my project is giving a 80% accuracy something like that. So before start of the project we should identify our ML success criteria and lastly we should also go for the economic success criteria with respect to domain expert we can understand just by uh, converting my what you can say the loan defaulter from 10% to 7% my bank is having some profit in billion dollars. So again with respect to what our uh, domain expert we can go with this part and then we can execute it. Okay, so in this way we have the content related with the business understanding. So what they mention here, it is important. What is that? It is recommended to write objective and constraint using two to three words. So this whatever the objective and constraint we have, we are having maximum two to three words or we can go for four to five words with which is having one sentence. Okay, and we have to use when we are defining it, we, should, we have to use the word minimize, maximize in this way. So for profit, I am saying maximize. If you are having error, we should minimize the error. And after finalizing this business understanding, the first document which is made that is called as a project charter. So project charter is the first document which we can say as a, it is same as good as a SLA, service level agreement, it is like that. So before starting the project, we and our domain expertise as well as our client, they are uh, what you can say, agree with certain terms and conditions that is considered as a project charter. So this is our first document which we have with us. Is it clear? Okay. Anyone is having any problem or any what you can say any part which is which you have not understood can we go ahead okay okay please uh, mention in the chat at least that you understood this part okay okay we'll go for the next part now next part is our data understanding See, the first part I divided in the two parts. See, here you can see in this diagram, we have 1A and 1B. Currently, I discussed about 1A. Now, we'll go for 1B part. There is a data understanding part. So, what we have to do in a data understanding? So, we should understand that data. So, that part we are dividing in two parts. One is having a related with data types. One is related with the data collection. How we are collecting the data. Again, this data type I am dividing in this different, different part. So, we'll see one by one in this part. In short, we'll see this part. So whatever the data we have, that data might be a continuous data. The continuous data, we can say it as a, basically it is the floating point data. Like we can say it as a temperature or interest rate. These all are the continuous value. Discrete data, mostly they are having an integer value. So in this way, we have these two value as well as we also have the data in terms of qualitative and quantitative. Already in the last lecture, we covered this part in a case of quantitative. We have that in uh, what you can say interval and ratio and in qualitative we have the nominal data and the ordinal data as well as we also have the data which is in which might be in structured form which might be in semi structured form or which might be in unstructured form the structured form is nothing but the data which is available in rows and columns form or we can consider as a tabular data so we are using sql basically to deal with that in case of semi structure we have the xml data we have a json data and in case of unstructured data to access the unstructured data we are using some uh, MongoDB type uh, data database and all these different stuff. Okay? Next, we have the big data versus non big data. Already we covered about the big data in the last class. So, we are considering total three we there. One is a volume, another one is nothing but a variability available with that. So, non big data is nothing but when we have a very small amount of data to train our model. At that time, it is considered as a non big data. Okay? Next, we have one more type of data, one cross-sectional, then is another one is a time series and third one is called as longitudinal panel data. The time series is nothing but in this type of data, the time plays a very important role. In cross-sectional data, we have in time series data, we have only one variable that is nothing but with respect to time, we are changing only one variable. In cross-sectional data, it is same as that of a time series data, but here we have more than one variable. And in case of a longitudinal and panel data, it is just a combination of cross-sectional data and the time series data. In this way, we have it. Next, when we are talking about the data, we are having balanced data or imbalanced data. What is the meaning of balance or imbalanced data? Suppose for training purpose, I have the 100 records. 
records are nothing but what we can say records are nothing but number of rows out of this 100 rows if i will consider related with my output column currently i am saying my problem statement is loan approval we have to go for loan approval so here you might be having value yes you might be having value no so if you have 100 records and if we have the value of this yes 60 loans are approved and 40 loans are not approved so at that time this data is considered as a balanced data generally we should have 50 50 percent data equal data but even if you have 60 40 it is also accepted but if you have some value other than this value means if you are having y suppose just consider this case y is around 80 percent part and no the loan approval is 80 and non approval role is a 20. so in this case for y we have what you can say your model is biased towards a yes as it is having a majority of y and it is having less value of n or the minority of n so in that way we have the balance and imbalance data hope so it is clear we will see how to deal with balance and imbalance data in the next lecture or what you can say in the next units we have to so we have certain technologies or terminologies certain uh, algorithms those who are dealing with this balance and imbalance data and last part available with data type is nothing but are you taking your data in the offline way or in the batch way or you are taking a live stream of your data based on that we are having a different different data types so this is a structure available for our data type hope so it is clear to you is it clear yes uh, please at least reply in the chat because see whatever we are covering here the entire stuff is nothing but the project life cycle of any data science project which is going for six to eight months in the industry so that's why this part is a little bit coding as a complex way so understand it okay now i am going for the second part available in case of data understanding see the first part we covered in the data understanding that is the data types now we are going for a data collection how we are collecting the data based on that we are having this different different way first we are talking about the resources which we are using so primary data resource and we have a secondary data resource in primary data research generally if you are doing a survey survey data or if you are a, you are performing web scrapping so this type of method if you are using to collect the data they are called as a primary data source and in secondary data source we have the dbms which we are using relational whatever it may be it may be structured for structured we are having sql oracle and all the stuff for non structure what you can say unstructured data we are using mongodb cassandra is different different stuff so they will come in the category of a secondary data as well as here we record one important concept that is a data version control you might have heard about this uh, word like github and all the stuff so git in github basically this github is also acting as a data version control so we should do the proper documentation related with our data next we should have a proper description related with the data while collecting our data we should have proper description descriptions means basically we are talking about the schema of the data so what is the structure of data what is the data type of data is the data is having missing values is the distribution is proper or not in this way we are going to save the content in our data description and when we are going for a business understanding at that time we are specifying our data requirement as well as after reception of our data we are also verifying the data so these are the steps available for our second part which we are considering as what data understanding is it clear see we covered this two part business understanding and data understanding anyone is having any issue with this part or can we go ahead this one one blocks it's very important when we are dealing with this part okay okay i will go ahead now we are going with the second part so we are having total six steps out of that first step is divided in two part one is a business understanding second step is our data understanding now we are going towards the next part we have to prepare a data so we are going to prepare a data so in case of data science we are having these three methods by which we are preparing a data first we are calling it as a exploratory data analysis which is also considered as a descriptive statistics second we are calling it as a data cleaning or data preparation in that the another name they have data monging they have data wrangling data organizing and lastly we are having feature engineering 
Now we'll see one by one part in detail. So what is the meaning of exploratory data analysis? We should understand the data in a depth. That is the meaning of exploratory data analysis. When we are talking about the exploratory data analysis or this uh, descriptive statistics, so we are having certain moment uh, business decisions. So we have first moment business decision, second moment business decision, third moment business decision, and fourth moment business decision. And at the end, in EDA part, we are also providing the graphical representation. So we'll see all this part. And we are also having currently in industry, they are also using some auto EDA inside which we are not performing these tasks directly by using certain standard library, we are going to perform auto EDA. So what is the first moment business decision that we'll see? So the first moment business decision, it basically talks about the measure of central tendency, which is nothing but mean, median and a mode. When we are dealing with the categorical data at that time, we are dealing with the mode part. Mode is nothing but the frequency. Here we are talking about the repetition of the maximum times or the frequency of that. In mode, we have a single mode, two mode or multi mode. If you have only single mode, it is considered as a unimodal. If you have two modes, it is considered as a bimodal. If you have more than two modes, it is considered as a multimodal. The example of two modes just now I have seen for person, person might be male, person might be female. For multimodal, you may go for a distinction, first class, second class, pass in this way. Okay. So this basically used when we are dealing with what? Categorical data. Next, mean and median. Mean, it is nothing but the average in that way. Yes, it is written. It is nothing but the average we have. But it is influenced by the outliers. Now, this is a new terminology we have, outliers. So what we are calling it as outliers in a class. Right now, suppose you are there in a third year, I think, right? So if I am talking about the normal age of a third year student, so you might be in the range of Sabika range 20 to 20, 20 to 22 range. I am considering that if you are in the third year, you might be in this range. But it might be possible that some students or by mistake while typing that some student they might have encountered with the age as a 38. So what happened in this case, as my entire data is in the range of 20 to 22, uh, 0 to 22 year but one person who is having an age as a 38 so this person is acting as an outlier so when we are talking about a mean mean is affected by outliers but median is not affected by outliers because in median we are arranging the data in voting as ascending order and then we are selecting the middle well so that's why it is not affected by influence by outlier and we are selecting the middle most value so this is called as a first moment business decision where we are considering it as a major of central tendency where we are having mean, median and the mode part. Okay. Now we'll move towards the next part, which is called as a second moment business decision. Second moment business decision, it talks about the measures of dispersion. These all terminologies are related with the statistics part. So that's why we'll not go in much more detail in second unit. All again, we have to see this terminology. So measure of dispersion there, we have the variance, we have the standard deviation and we have the range. So for one corresponding variable, we are going to calculate the variance of it. What is the meaning of variance? So variance is represented by this formula. Summation of XR is your current data. Mu is nothing but mean and N is nothing but total number of records we have. So in variance, basically as we are taking a square. So because of that square, if you have outliers, then this value variance, it is get stretched. We will get a very big value for variance. So it is not preferred. So instead of variance, they are going for next part where we are having a standard deviation, where we are taking a square root of the variance. And because of that square root, it is the advantages than our variance. So both this technology, they provide the measurements of the dispersion. You'll see this part when you go next part. And next we have the range part, range function you might have used in Python. So by using a range function, we are having max and mean value by using which we can understand what is the dispersion of the given data. So this is the second moment business decision we have. Next, we are going for the third part, which is nothing but the third moment business decision and the fourth moment business decision. In third moment business decision, basically we are talking about the skewness. So when we are plotting any feature, right? So at that time, we are expecting that we should have the feature in this way. The distribution should be, the ideal distribution should be in this way. Where we have mean, median and mode at the same point. But ideally, it will not happen. You might be having a left skewed data, which is considered as a negatively skewed, or you might be having the right skewed data, which is considered as a positively skewed data. And because of that, what happened? These three parameters are get changed. Okay, we'll see this in much more detail when we'll go to the next part. But if you, the expected is that skewness should be zero. 
that is a normal distributed data so if your feature is normally distributed it means that your data will work very properly but if you have the right skew data or left skew data how to deal with this data that part we'll see when you'll go for feature engineering next we are talking about the fourth moment business decision so fourth moment business decision is a courtesis so these are all the different different terminologies we have we just now we have covered about the skewness same we have the courtesis so this courtesis if it is having a value 3 it means the data is a normally distributed now you may use any method you may go for first level business decision second level business decision th third level or fourth level it depends on you it's not mandatory we have to use all the uh, business decision levels so if you have courtesis equal to 3 it means we have a normally distributed data which is our expectation but in sometimes you might be having a negative courtesis is what is the meaning of that you will be having a wide a wide peak and very thin tails right means what the data is distributed so basically we are expecting suppose this should be our normal distribution but if you are going in this way so what we have the peak should be wide so it will go in this way and your tails are thin like this it is happening and when we are going for positive courtesis then we are having very sharp peak means it will go like this so you will be having a data in this way so this is nothing but a positive courtesis this is negative courtesis and courtesis equal to 3 so by this way we are going to check the our data so this is the fourth moment business decision we have while dealing with this data next we are talking about the graphical representation in graphical representation you might be having univariate analysis bivariate analysis or multivariate analysis and as well as we are using some standard libraries available for auto edm so here you can see we are having univariate analysis uni means single so if you are only considering single feature that will come in a univariate analysis if you are considering more than one feature that will go in a bivariate analysis and if you are considering more than two feature that will go inside a multivariate case and lastly now currently in industry instead of doing all the above stuff they are directly using auto eda auto means automatic eda so in auto eda we have this different different library like we have sweets uh, sweet weeds we have auto viz we have detail we have pandas profiling and we have data prep this five libraries are there there are some more libraries are there but these are some popular libraries and how to use this library so to install any library we have to go for pip install operation then to import the library we are using in this way by using some alias we are using it and for that library we simply has to pass our data frame and by default it will generate your what you can say uh, auto vd apart and it will show it as a html file so in this way it is going to work so is it clear the second part is clear we covered about this part so we are having a exploratory data analysis part okay this part is covered now we'll go for the second part where we are talking about data cleaning or data preparation how we are preparing a data before transmitting to our model so in data preparation these are the different operations we need to perform type casting some of the time what happens uh, some of the variables they will be available in what you can say categorical term so we should convert it into numerical or some variable they may available as string so we should convert it into the category that is called as a type casting next we have the handling the duplicates so some records if some columns are duplicated or some records are duplicated then how to deal with it so that is available in our handling duplicate part we may ignore it we may delete it we have the different different strategy to deal with the duplicates now again same way we have the outlier treatment outlier just now we discuss about that this is the data point which is very much far away from the mean data point so how to deal with this part generally it is not expected to delete the data because the every data is important to us so we should do certain treatment on that so we'll see which different type of treatment we are using next we have a zero and near zero variance feature what is the meaning of that i have f1 feature in f1 feature i am representing age and i have f2 feature that f2 feature it talks about the birth date suppose this age you are calculating on 2024 so now if you see for 2024 suppose one person is having an age as a 30 so with respect to that so it is having what 2094 this is the birth year, birth year for that so this birth date and the age both the if you see this both this uh, what again say features they are very correlated to each other so this at that time we are considering as what zero variance there is no variation in both this as both are same because from birth date we are calculating age or from age we can easily calculate the birth date so in this way we should 
what you can say out of both we should delete one of the feature or we should cancel one of the feature so we'll see that part next we should go for discretization or binning or grouping what is the meaning of discretization so generally suppose i am having age so that age suppose it is in the range of 30 29 in this way suppose you are going for a bank person and bank person want to identify if the person is minor or not so the person who is having age less than 18 is a minor for the person who is having senior citizen for that they are considering the age greater than 65 or 70 whatever is there so my first bin is between in the in the range of 0 to 18 in between i have the customers that is 19 to 64 they are the normal customers and the person who is having age greater than 65 they are the senior citizens so i made a three bin one is for 0 to 18 second one is from 19 to 64 and third one is for greater than 65 so in this way we are doing that part as a discretization or winning or we are also considering it as a grouping next at certain duration we have to generate the dummy variable so what is the meaning of dummy variable from one feature you have to generate some other feature that is considered as a dummy variable part next we are talking about the missing values so when we are dealing with the data so we should consider the how we are dealing with the missing values missing values means for some of the features some values are missing so how to deal with this missing values so if you have a huge amount of data and if the missing values are less than what you can say three to four percent at that time we can straight away drop it or if it is not possible to drop if you have really less data then at that time we should impute it and mostly for imputation purpose you may go for mean median or mode type of a data so if you have a categorical data you can go for mode if you don't have a, a impact of outlier you can use a mean data and if you have impact of outlier then you can go for median data next we require a transformation for what purpose we require transformation so general thing is that initially we have seen we have the some data which is having a skewness which type of skewness we have we have right skew data or a left skew data so at that time we should transfer a data we should do the transformation on that data so you may go for log normalization on that data right so in this way we have different different transformation techniques we will see this later on when we will go for unit number three next we have to go for a feature scaling part now why we require a feature scaling it is again important terminology see suppose i am writing my expression become y is equal to function f1 with some value okay into suppose 2 plus f2 into with again some value suppose that value is 3 now in this case f1 and f2 if you consider suppose f1 is acting as an income and f2 is acting as what age so now what is the income for normal person the income might be 10,000 but age if you consider the age available in the range of what 20 to maximum it will be 60 so at that time if you try to multiply this in the contribution inside of y is more what you can say tilted towards your phone part because this value is a very huge value so at that time we should normalize this value so after doing a normalization the f1 values all the values in the range of 0 to 1 as well as f2 values are also in the range of 0 to 1 then we can easily identify whether that part is performing proper or not so that's why we require feature scaling and to deal with a string we have a different different operations you might have uh, deal with what you can say string related operations in the last what you can say here and last part available for this is nothing but feature engineering so how we are generating a different features that part we are considering as a feature engineering so feature engineering is available for temporal data feature engineering available for numerical data categorical data text data and image data so for every data we are having a different different feature engineering we are performing different different operations so when we are having temporal data temporal data is nothing but the data which is based on a date based or the time based features so generally time series based data which is considered as a temporal data in numerical data just now we have seen we are performing binarization binarization means converting that value as a 0 or 1 next we are also performing binning binning means forming the different different groups if we are also performing the rounding on the data then we are also performing interactions as well as we are performing certain raw measures on the numeric data so we have temporal data then we have the numeric data for categorical data we are having a nominal case ordinal case as well as we are performing certain one not encoding cases for text data we have a bag of words as well as tf idf we have ngram model we have and we are having cosine similarity where we are identifying the different different similarity and lastly to deal with the image data image is a combination of pixels so there we have the grayscale image we have certain raw images there as well as we are also considering the binning part for that and we are performing the image aggregation and the age detection so these are the different different feature engineering techniques we are performing on the different data 
in feature extraction we are performing certain extraction of the features by using some automatic techniques or we may go for certain manual techniques and one important feature extraction technique which we are using is a pca principal component analysis but the problem with this technique is that it is not providing you proper explanation so in some cases if you don't require a proper explanation pca is preferred but if you require explanation you are not going for pre, uh, what you can say pca part and the feature selection technique we have some we are having some statistical methods for that some threshold based methods some model based method and we have certain subset selection methods so in this way we cover this feature engineering part data cleaning part and exploratory data analysis part related with the data preparation anyone is having any doubt inside it i know this is an entirely theoretical concept actually uh, we should have a practical hands on on this but to implement it just now what i said for one project we required 6 to 8 month this much duration to handle this data or to handle the entire project theek okay? so till today we covered about this first two parts only so what we seen today we will only cover this part uh, the third part will start in the next class tomorrow we'll see so we considered business understanding data understanding and data preparation these two parts we covered in tomorrow's class we'll see about a model building and evaluation part and in the day after tomorrow we'll complete model deployment and monitoring and maintenance so that unit number 1 is get completed in that perspective okay clear so so anyone is having any doubt yes are you having any doubts if you have any doubts please ask or uh, we will stop here Yes anyone is having any doubt Okay so if you don't have any doubt we'll uh, stop here tomorrow again at 4 pm we have the lecture so we'll try to cover the uh, two parts so today we covered about business understanding data understanding and the data preparation part tomorrow we'll see about the model building part and the evaluation of that and the day after tomorrow we'll complete our unit number 1 so today we'll stop here thank you so much okay chalo bye bye take care good day bye